how to introduce mathematics to children. Math Olympiad programs for young kids. One such experience that we have uh, had in this particular program, we use tools like GeoGebra to create platonic solids like cube, octahedron, icosahedron and so on. One of the greatest mathematicians of our time, Cedric Villani, created a very beautiful investigation on how to teach mathematics at elementary school level and one of his recommendation was to do hands-on mathematics. Adjacency relation is a very important relation. In fact, relations themselves are quite important. It's very uh, intuitive and structured in nature to understand relations. It's sort of the first step toward understanding structured knowledge. They sort of grasped the idea pretty quickly. And then we could actually propose more complex problems. One of the things that is really close to my heart is how to introduce mathematics to children. Children means uh, elementary school students, students of grade 1 through 4. Now, perhaps you already know this, Chinta has something called the Thousand Flower Programs, Math Olympiad programs for young kids. And we are constantly reviewing and innovating in that sphere of mathematical training because it's very sensitive. We learn a lot from the kids over the last 10 years. We have learned how kids learn and it's a, it's an ongoing process. We cannot claim that we have already learned everything that is there to learn. In fact, I think we are only 10 or 20 percent on that way. But what we really believe is that people who are at the higher stages of mathematics, maybe who are doing university mathematics, who are doing research mathematics, and who are interested to teach, they should invest serious time in creating curriculums, creating problems that are helpful for elementary school students. And that's exactly what we are doing here. It's a very hard job because children are most sensitive at that particular age and their brains are sort of taking shape. The neural pathways are making their own way. So it's very, very sensitive age uh, span in, in their life. Today, I want to talk to you about one such experience that we have uh, had in this particular program and what the thing that we incorporated on the way in our curriculum. We always did a little bit of computational mathematics at that level. We used tools like GeoGebra to create platonic solids like cube, octahedron, icosahedron and so on. These are very beautiful and when you do it using GeoGebra or using paper, it is a very hands-on kind of experience with mathematics and that is very helpful. In fact, one of the greatest mathematicians of our time, Cedric Villani, created a very beautiful investigation on how to teach mathematics at elementary school level and one of his recommendation was to do hands-on mathematics. Now, having said that, with the creation of cubes and the creation of paper models of those platonic solids, we also now added something called coloring. So, in mathematics, Adjacency relation is a very important relation. In fact, relations themselves are quite important. It's very uh, intuitive and structured in nature to understand relation. It's sort of the first step toward understanding structured knowledge. We say two faces of a cube are adjacent if they share uh, an edge. Two faces are adjacent if they share an edge. This is a relation that we are imposing on the faces, the six faces of a cube. I mean, the same thing can be done with any other solid. Now, for a young mind which, who is in like grade 2, 3, 4, it's hard to sort of single out those pairs of faces which share an edge. 
So we recently did this. We introduced something called a coloring technique. So we said that we colored the different faces of the cube, but make sure that two adjacent faces do not have the same color. It was an interesting problem. What we saw is once we were not abstractly explaining what is adjacency, but ask them to do something like a coloring, they sort of grasped the idea pretty quickly. And then we could actually propose more complex problems. For example, we could say, what is the minimum number of different colors you need to do such a thing, to color the faces of the cube with adjacent faces having distinct colors? We asked another question, which was a little bit more complicated. If you want to do different colorings of the cube, and you, you are not, different means two colorings are different. If you turn the cube, you cannot convert one coloring into another. So how many different colorings of the cube are possible uh, such that two adjacent faces do not have the same color? So we did it for the cube, we did it for other platonic solids like icosahedron, octahedron and so on. And uh, second graders, third graders, fourth graders, really we did not do it with the first graders. Uh, they could understand and they could actually, uh, we, see, we saw that they were involved in the process of actually coloring it, actually uh, guessing what the answer is, trying to recognize some sort of a pattern. It's a very interesting exercise. You can try this in your home and with your children or if you have a brother or sister who wants to try some nice mathematics, you can also do that. Again, I want to say this that we are still learning even after 10-12 years of doing this, we are still learning how to teach mathematics effectively at that stage, the stage of elementary school. It's a very interesting exercise for us as teachers how to develop a nice curriculum that provoke interest and energizes the student and creates a foundation for a long-term mathematical journey. So it's a hard work. If you have ideas, please put them in the comment. If you have questions, please put them in the comment. I am, uh, I, I, we are very glad to discuss these things with each other. Uh, we have WhatsApp groups where we discuss these things. You can go to chinta.com, link in the description and join us via WhatsApp open groups where we can discuss these ideas. Thank you for joining in today. I'll see you next time. Take care.